Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23, where we now have quite a lot going on in Kerbin slash Earth orbit, and we do have now a geostationary satellite above the above the KSC, but the question is whether all of this will help us do a sample return mission from beyond that orbit. So high over Kerbin is beyond this orbit. We have to get beyond it in order to get that reading and those samples and that 200 science points that we need to unlock the crude portion of this whole adventure. And uh, you can see everything in context here. It's, it's a good thing to note uh, that geostationary uh, stat satellite, how far away it is from Earth slash Kerbin and how far away the moon is and also the moon's tremendous inclination with respect to everything else that we've been doing so far. But, uh, so this takes a lot of thinking. We did uh, replace the Raggedy Sat, so hopefully that'll patch up some of the gaps in our system. But there, there's no avoiding the fact that once all the satellites go to their periapses, that's a bad thing for communications. So we're going to have to try and get in when they're at their apoapses. And that all, that all depends on how far out we go and I guess I'll have to do that calculation uh, when we're setting our apoapsis for the mission okay otherwise there's no real way to I mean ideally you'd want the G stat to be above the mission or in communication with the mission as long as the mission has a dish that uh, can communicate with that. But that basically means that we have to get it right above the KSC, which isn't possible unless we have an apoapsis that's pretty far out, uh, 12 hours to the apoapsis and 12, 12 hours back. Um, so yeah, so I don't know if that's going to happen. There's all sorts of wild cards like the Polestar satellite and also the various high toss probes that still maintain communication. There's this, uh, where's this, this one? Oh, I don't even, s oh, it, it's here, the TDRS Polar. Anyway, so let's go to VAB and take a look at our, our intended satellite and then launch it as soon as possible. If it takes more than one try, we'll do more than one try. Let's just get those points, shall we? Okay, so here we are with the High Toss 3, and I think we've got everything settled here. Hmm. You know, I'd very much like this antenna to be on here instead. Do I suppose that it has enough electric charge, though? Let's see. Can we fit it on here? Uh, let, let me take a look at it when it's deployed. Oh, uh, well, it's just gonna burn up, isn't it? But how we... Because the only uh, serviceable antenna we have on this is the one with a uh, 5 kilometer range. And, uh, not 5 kilometer, 5,000 kilometer range. So that's not really going to be enough. This this one has a 500,000 kilometer range, which would be enough, but it snaps under high dynamic pressure anyway, so it's not. It's just going to have the same situation as the Communitron. So I guess we'll just have it down here anyway. Okay, well, um, let me try it out with our current communication network and then see what I need to adjust. Uh, come on. And XXX. Oh, no. Come on, you. All right. So, I'm just going to... You know, yeah, I haven't changed the rocket at all, so I'm just going to cut the high toss 3D. The other one wasn't uh, successful, so let's uh, take it out the launch pad and see how it works. Alright, so here we go. SAS on. Throttle up. And... Off we go. Now this time I really do not... Well, I mean, we're going to end up in a really high orbit anyway, but we really don't have to worry about maintaining connection with the KSC because we've got that geostationary satellite. So let me just go in a very normal arc 
instead of trying to uh, trying to stay high over the KSC in order to maintain communication. So this will be probably the first time in this uh, entire series that I'm going to attempt a normal launch profile instead of one of those really really strange ones I've been doing. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a lean into it right now. Eventually I want to do testing on these stages and try and get the maximum amount uh, payload to orbit for this particular rocket. Uh, and that'll, that testing will happen as part of my Kerbal rating process for this rocket. And uh, so with that I'll be using MechGem. There's uh, pretty much no avoiding that. Because I want to keep everything consistent to get uh, good numbers and uh, manually pilot, piloting it uh, does not produce consistency. Um, not not uh, good enough for for testing purposes. So there will probably be a testing episode before I launch a Kerbal on this stuff. Where I optimize the various stages and then also make sure that uh, I know what the G-forces are going to be doing. So if I need to, well I can't throttle down this particular rocket, but uh, we need to get those g-forces under control before we put a Kerbal on. Now, um, you know, Alan Shepard faced some pretty serious g-forces on his trip, so we're not going to limit it to four g's the way that they normally do for most missions. Uh, we'll limit it to what, uh, uh, probably about 9 G's, which is the max that he experienced. Not on the way up, though. That was on the way down. Um, probably limit to 6 G's on the way up. So you got to have to figure out how to do that. It's probably pretty close right now. We, we can take a look here and we're slowly creeping up past 3 G's now. The critical portion is of course right when the first stage is about to separate. That's when we get the max, maximum G-forces. So past 5 G's now. And that there's six G's, so gotta fix that. Seven G's. Okay. Oh, uh, we've got. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's right. Always make sure you've got everything right, otherwise. find out later. Oh, we've actually got the antenna sort of poking out a little bit here. That's neat, actually. Because this fairing actually has a hole in the front. Because <laughs> uh, uh, it's not really meant as the top fairing. These are side fairings that I've uh, shaped for this purpose. But, uh, yeah, cute to have the little antenna out. That's good. Actually, I like that a lot. Okay, we really don't need to tilt down here, though. We we can stay at uh, even 30 degrees, so I'm, I'm overdoing it here. Trying to make a normal launch profile, but... Uh, but here, at this part, part we really need to be just uh, 30 degrees up. And that's because I don't want my periapsis to get uh, too high. Because we're bringing this back down right away. I mean, I guess we could 
we could delay it if it's in the wrong position or something like that, but that's pretty costly and I don't think we have the fuel for that. In other words, we could, if let's say the satellites were in the wrong position, right? And we went up and we saw that uh, probably they would be wrong, in the wrong position uh, when we were trying to get back into the atmosphere. So in that case, if the periapsis was high, we could just uh, stay in orbit and either make another pass, because we do have the electric charge for that. The electric charge is not a problem. We could just go around a second time, or otherwise, uh, uh, we could time it. We could actually uh, do a retro burn at that point and bring our orbit in and figure out how long it'll need to be. But really, let's see if we can do it on the way out instead of the way in. This should really be here, I think. So yeah, in uh, Kerbal Space Program news, of course, uh, we are expecting the the asteroid retrieval mission, or what do they call it, return mission? A ARM anyway. One way or another, its acronym is ARM. Um, the asteroid redirect, redirect mission. And uh, that, they, they promised to give us some interesting insight into that on Monday at midnight out of all things midnight uh, PST my time uh, Pacific Standard Time so so yeah that should be very very interesting I don't know what that they, they, they hinted at information at that point but they didn't really tell us whether that was a release time or not uh, usually with uh, KSP releases, we get uh, the long marathon weekend uh, before the release, and uh, they're all uh, showing us all the features before we get to try out the features. But I'm not sure whether they want to do that this time. Clearly, if they're going to uh, start this little thing on Monday, uh, that doesn't suggest that we're going to have a marathon weekend with all the uh, people on Twitch TV. Uh, doing a uh, Kerbal Space Program, showing off the new features before we get to try them out. But, but, we, I don't know, because, I mean, it could be that uh, Monday midnight is just the start of that sort of a marathon where they show us the features and we get the release uh, further down the road. We know that some of the KSP people have uh, this ARM mission already, uh, including Yargnit, who manages the Twitch TV stuff, and uh, Scott Manley, of course, has the ARM. So I don't know if uh, everybody uh, involved in the standard beta testing process has this mission, but it sounds like it. So, so we might be seeing that. Uh, that mission, which was created, of course, with the help of NASA and uh, probably quite a lot of pressure from NASA, because uh, if NASA's going to put its imprint on it, it's going to uh, want certain standards. And uh, let's face it, the KSP team are good at meeting such standards anyway, so so no problems there. But I'm sure it was a pretty uh, hectic and stressful time for them. And the f this uh, update, the ARM update, is going to be separate from the .24 update. Uh, the .24 update, of course, has features that I'm interested in, like contracts and stuff like that, which will add a new dimension to the game. I hope they have an economy system of some kind, so that the cost of the parts really does matter. The ARM mission uh, will have the larger parts uh, so that, and I'm, I'm hoping they're just 3.75 meter parts because that would be appropriate in terms of the scaling of Kerbin. Uh, that would be the correct size if you wanted to create an SLS replica for Kerbin. But uh, I don't know what, what size they're going to be. Uh, we have been promised uh, larger solid rocket boosters and that, I'm, uh, that I want because larger solid rocket boosters are necessary to make solid rocket boosters even remotely useful in this game. Right now they're so small uh, they're, they're not really the... they're really not as useful as I would like them to be. 
so yeah, that those uh, new parts will be in the ARM update, and new features as far as career mode is concerned will be in the 0.24. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think the joint reinforcement uh, that they've been introduced, that they've been uh, hinting at and talking about, uh, will be in 0.24, which means that I guess we're going to have the huge SLS rocket in uh, a the ARM update, but not have the reinforcement. I'm not too sure about that, but it, it might be that they decide to put the joint reinforcement in the ARM update instead of 0.24, and I hope they do. That would make a lot of sense. Because we got to be building big rockets, and we would like stability for said big rockets. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty much all I know about the situation right now. Uh, it's always a little bit uh, annoying to have everybody uh, enticing you with uh, little uh, tidbits about an update without actually having even the sense of when that update update's gonna come and it looks like we're close to it we're talking about March 24th uh, probably at most another week after that uh, if not on the day of March 24th so okay I'm gonna tilt up a little bit more here Again, to keep the periapsis down. Okay. Uh, let me throttle down before separating the stages. Alright, and... Let me get communication set up first before I do anything else. And that means... Where is my... Big antenna? I did slide back down, didn't I? Okay. Alright, and before I do anything else as well, I need to make sure that... Jeez, that uh, is really gotta be uh, keep, uh, keeping up consistent communication with this rocket so let me switch to that okay so here we are and I'm just gonna tell this dish to uh, where no don't zoom out at the same time I'm looking for what I'm looking for um, see now is it I guess it will be high toss 3 I hope uh, let me just make sure that's not high toss 3 probe Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, let me switch to high toss three then. Okay, I think that's right. Um, it sure shows the line of communication, but I don't know whether that's the communitron working or the main dish. But all right, we've we've let's say we've got communication, and because I don't know how else to check it, and that means we may continue. And so let's. Uh, do that. Oh, uh, we have a reaction wheel. Don't pretend we don't. Well, now our periaps is going up a little bit fast, but uh, I guess we'll just have to do a retro burn at altitude. The problem was that I, I did uh, do a very flat trajectory going out. I shouldn't have dipped below 30 degrees uh, on the on the launch profile. So, in other space news, I uh, watched uh, Scott Manley's most recent deep space hangout. Not live. I just watched it on YouTube. And uh, so, if you don't know uh, Scott Manley, the the guy who has the most popular uh, videos on KSP, um, he he does a deep space hangout with uh, certain uh, space-minded people, including uh, usually one Eve Online person and one person either involved in NASA or astronomy, uh, somebody who actually studies astronomy, and and 
in the most recent one, the the fellow from NASA's JPL that he had on, and you can watch this either live on Google Hangout or afterwards on YouTube. And uh, anyway, the guy from uh, NASA JPL mentioned the NISS app, and I can't believe I hadn't uh, seen this before, but but uh, the space station app from NASA is pretty darn good and unfortunately he's saying that they're going to be shutting it down soon but you might want to take a look at it before they do I don't know if uh, what they're shutting it down and he he couldn't be specific about it either because he wasn't sure but uh, he just wanted to draw attention to that I've, I've got it on my iPad I, I think uh, he said it worked on Android as well there was an Android version uh, but but it gives quite a lot of information. I mean, not just the location of the ISS or anything like that, but we're, we're talking about the wastewater levels on the ISS uh, and, and the freshwater levels on the ISS and, uh, and the pressure of oxygen in, in the U.S. managed modules on the ISS. You know, I want to push it beyond... Uh, well, no, this, is, this will have to be good enough. Yeah, so that is a very interesting app, and I hope they don't shut it down. I, I'm not too sure what they were intending on shutting it down, uh, shutting down, and uh, and he wasn't able to be specific about that either. But uh, you might want to take a look at that if you have the means, obviously. And NASA's got a lot of interesting apps and uh, programs. Uh, in the same Google Hangout, he uh, highlighted uh, NASA's eyes on. I guess on the universe or on the solar system. That's uh, that's a very neat little app. Okay, so... But yeah, if you don't watch... Uh, Scott Manley's Deep Space Hangout, that, that would be a good thing to tune into. It never seems to be going to uh, GSTAT 1, and I'm sort of worried about that. Because it's going to come a point right about here uh, that has to. Oh, well, I guess maybe not. Come on. <laughs> it's going through two satellites, but it's just not wanting to go through the geostationary one. This has me worried, because we've named another mission High Toss 3, and also there's, there's the part of this mission that I, I do have it connected to, to, uh, to GSTAT and not the mission control, right? Yeah. Huh. We're pretty far out now. I'm surprised it can connect to any... Th I mean, I guess it's connecting directly to Mission Control? Does this remote tech work differently than... than usual? I don't see how it can connect directly to Mission Control at all. We're 46,000 kilometers out. This antenna has a range of 25,000 kilometers and this one is aimed at GSTAT 1. Now does that mean I don't have to manually uh, tell it what to connect to? I think I'm a little bit worried about that. But it could be that the tweaks that uh, Realistic Progression Light made to Remote Tech might have caused that or maybe that it's a new version of Remote Tech that doesn't uh, have the whole interconnectivity issue, but I sure had a lot of connection problems if that was the case, so I don't know about that. Anyway, let's, let's before I forget, let's do the experiment. Um, activate data recorder. And I'll have to remember to put electric charge into this before decoupling. And the top battery. Okay, keep the data. All right, I don't think I need to uh, have the data recorder on now. All right, but we'll have to transfer the power when we get down. Now let's see what our situation will be. 
and it looks like we are seven and a half hours away from, from getting back down there. Well, you know what? We're, we're at a high periapsis. So let's get right above the atmosphere and then we'll burn down into it once we get over over on that side and see how the satellites are configured. I think that's the best course of action. So, launching our reaction wheel a little bit. Let's dip our periapsis down. Very easy from this portion. And that's a little bit into the atmosphere, but not horribly so. Yeah, actually we can go a little bit lower than, that's basically aero break. Uh, just a little bit. Okay. Well, I don't know. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know where to air break so that this will bring us into um, closer orbit. Let's try 90.9 for now really closer to 91. Alright, let's just take it from this view. And electric charge is holding fine. Everything else seems to be alright. Okay. I'm still worried that we never seem to get communication through our geostationary satellite. Not really a test of that part of things. But otherwise, I think we've maintained connection throughout this mission so far. Now, you'll see here, I think they're going down, down, and they're eventually going to hit their periapses. So, but no, this, well, yeah, yeah, they're, they're on their downward leg. Okay, let's let's take a look at what's going on here. First thing, transfer electric charge. At this height, we don't need to decouple the this portion. It's not going to produce substantial heating. So, we'll be able to keep everything together. I don't know. I don't think the atmosphere will cause the antennae to snap off yet either. There's lots of other space stuff going on but I'll probably hold off on discussing those including uh, yesterday there was the 2014 Isaac Asimov memorial debate and that was hosted by Neil deGrasse Tyson who's also doing Cosmos which is another thing that could be discussed. Um, but that debate centered on uh, making space travel enticing, basically. So I think uh, that is a subject relevant to all KSP peoples. So I'll t if you haven't watched it, it is available online. I'll, uh, but uh, the reason I'm not going to discuss it in detail here is because I didn't uh, get the details down. So uh, I'll. I'll I'll mention it uh, in more detail once I've got the uh, got the notes, which will uh, allow me to tell you where to look for it and all that. But of course, you could just type in Google uh, 2014 Isaac Asimov Memorial Debate, and those are always good to watch. And uh, for the past few years, um, they've been hosted by Neil deGrasse Tyson. So if you like him, uh, you'll probably enjoy watching that as well. Okay, wow. Sort of a complicated situation right now, which is our Madrid and Uragadi advanced. Okay, it's not bad. And the one over KSC is Bermuda. The one over the KSC is the one that's important. And Aurora Valley will take over after it. Uh, no, uh, I guess Madrid will. Or, well, well, we'll see. I don't think the planet will rotate enough for a real change in hands here. Oh, we're going actually through polar, are we? Oh, 
All right. Well, that's why I kept Polar in. Uh, well, not just Polar, but also the the Pole Star. I kept in uh, commun Communitron 16 range, but that's not going to help once we need to get back down and maintain communication within 5,000 kilometers. Okay, uh, let's see, we're gonna hit the atmosphere and we're going to only dip in briefly. Really wish the music would s would change or stop at the appropriate time here. Obviously, we are now in the atmosphere. Normally, in KSP, the music would stop at this point, but I also don't really want it to stop. There should be some sort of atmospheric effect, if you will, uh, some sort of appropriate music to this situation. Okay, well, uh, since the the satellites, well, they're not really in a bad location. And they're, they're actually going to be getting in a better and better location for us. Because they're going down, right? Yeah, okay, uh, you know what? Let me... <laughs> Let me nix this thing, maybe. Uh, no, that's not the right way to do anything. Okay. I think I've done this a little bit too late already. No, that's not necessarily true. No, uh, perhaps it's going up like that. That's not right. Right, but it could be because we're on the other side now. Shoot. Right. Um, come on, reaction wheels. Help me out here. Unfortunately, the atmosphere is somewhat interfering with my ability to turn this thing. And so is inertia. There we go. Oh, come on. Finally, okay. Yeah, I actually, uh, basically all planning is out the window. I don't actually know where we're going to end up now. Let's keep a little bit of control over the situation. Let's see, we're going to go around in, let's say, seven and a half hours. I think the KSC will be under our periapsis by that time. Right? I think it'll be about right. Yeah. So, why don't we just wait now? So, we're going to go for another orbit. Oh, now, uh, wait, wait. Uh, we've got a little bit of a pause in the system. Uh, G status was briefly working there for us. I'm gonna have to review this video, but I don't think we've actually lost communication at any point. It's like don't speak too soon, right? Ah, well, KSC is getting there. Might not be quite right, but it'll be close. Okay. Yeah, there we are.
I don't know if we really need to dip our periapsis that much. Let's just get the apoapsis dealt with. Oh, that also dips the peri... Uh, let's go this way then. I don't want to face a bad re-entry. Oh, and this is still... I do actually want to come down here though. Okay, well that's gonna be it. Alright. Gonna end up somewhere over here. And this satellite is, oh it's gonna be a little bit high. Hmm. I sense we might still have difficulties here, even though I've got a very nice satellite system. Okay, well, nothing for it. Uh, if we fail this time, we will try once again. But. At least we will know. I'm wondering why this ends up being a separate piece. I'm doing something wrong, obviously. Uh, anyway, um, from this we'll know what I did wrong, at least. Really would have been nice if I had gotten it right over the KSC. That would have been cool, but looks like we're gonna end up over the Korean continent, Korean shaped continent instead and that's probably not a good situation all right well time warp and find out okay It should have really uh, transferred the electric charge, but I guess we'll have enough. Now, where are we? This one is getting a little bit high. This one is uh, steadily going out of range. We're no longer within line of sight of the KSC. We can... Uh, Verify that pretty easily. We can't see the KSC. We no longer have a uh, couple engineer on this part, so let me just make sure we are actually coming down. Don't know if it'll get all the way though. Now, somebody mentioned in the comments about setting the parachutes to open a particular point so that I don't have to worry about it, but uh, based on the pressure. But I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, I mean, if you increase the minimum pressure, then yeah, that that would that would be the thing, right? If you increase the minimum pressure on it, then it won't uh, pop out at uh, 20, 20 kilometers. It'll pop out at a lower altitude, which would be better. Uh, well, but uh, let me try it this time this way first, and then uh, we'll look at that as another. What the heck is going on? I sense a glitch here. 
let me just okay okay well that's oh there's still a glitch going on here okay I'm just gonna avoid the map mode then we're we're definitely coming down right now g-forces might be a rough patch if we don't slow down soon enough but really how are we connected right now I can't even tell because we've got this Okay, uh, I'm just gonna put the X on. Okay, we're through Uragity Advance, so good thing I put that satellite up. But we're probably still using the Commutatron 16, I think. So uh, if it's ever gonna snap off, it probably should have snapped off by now. Yeah, I think it's off. I can't click on it. Okay, here's those G-forces creeping up. Surprising we're not losing more of the Blade of Shielding. I, I still didn't check in the VAB whether we can uh, put less of Blade of Shielding or not and whether that would cause the weight savings. So add that to the list of things to do if this doesn't work. Okay, it looks like the G-forces are pretty well contained actually. This would be an acceptable, uh, acceptable re-entry for a Kerbal uh, as long as he was doing a, a Mercury style mission. Still only used a tenth of my blade of shielding. It's pretty remarkable. Means that despite all the sound and fury, we're not really actually getting too hot. Let's see, what is the heat on this thing? Yeah, 570 degrees Celsius. What's the big deal? We're still connected. Though I don't know if that's really legit. Well, no, now, now it looks okay. I can turn around as long as I have this X out I guess I guess this is maybe too too many lines no no it's still working okay so uh, so I just had a momentary glitch where it wasn't showing me it wasn't refreshing these properly but now it's fine okay and we're going slower now and we're still connected through Uragity and I know for a fact that uh, the Commutatron 16 has to be off by now, so it's, it is through this one. So even though this has a 5,000 kilometer range, apparently that, that that's that's there's a fudge factor there. Go figure. And is that the Korean-shaped continent? Indeed, it is. Up oh, there goes the uh, Commutron 16, but we're still connected. And standard procedure is once we get to 500 meters per second, I get to uh, pop the parachutes. I'm not going to wait until, normally I wait until like 15 kilometers as well, but I'm not going to hold off on that. Okay, let's not wait, otherwise things are bound to get weird. Let's say us off. It ended up pointing at its uh, prograde, I don't like that. But uh, once, the, once the parachute's fully open, it won't be pointing at prograde anymore.
Okay, let's see how much snaps off when it does this. Not anything, because this is real shoots, I guess. And real shoots don't all... Don't snap things off unexpectedly like normal shoots do. Okay, there we go. Uh, if it ever, ever settles down enough... For, why does it do this? Water physics, weird. Yeah, okay, let me try and... If I ever see the recover vessel thing again... Uh, come on. This is like some sort of mini-game. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay, uh, SAS, help me out here. Okay, come on, I, I, I clicked the recover vessel. Okay. And there you have it, we finally were successful. We maintained communication, 200 science, and I think you know what we need to do. We need to get our technology. I said I wanted early capsules and life support, and here we are. We've got that. We, uh, we are eschewing the whole seismometer and barometer part, and I know there's Goo and Science Junior up here somewhere, so... Uh, I do want the science, but... But we've got, we've got, uh, we do have new science to do with, uh, with the crude caps. Let me just make sure that, uh, we've got the command pod in the VAB and ready to go. I still don't understand this at all. Totally don't understand what this is about. If somebody can tell me what these are and why I have them here, I'd be much appreciative. Uh, it looks like another pod. No, now it's point one. Uh, there's something glitchy going on here. Anyway, uh, let me go to the VAB and just to pull out the pod in preparation for the next episode. Okay, so here we are and let me just first load up the high toss 3 that we just used. Oh, uh, was it the one that we just used? I wonder if I saved it prop. Well, no, I didn't change it at all. Okay, so what we're going to end up trying to do, if we can get things right, is we're going to be actually replacing all of this. Oh, come on, you. And trying to put this on top. And it so happens to fit. So something of this sort. But we're not going to do this yet. Because we need to Kerbal Rate our rockets and make sure they're safe enough for Kerbals to fly on. And of course re-enter in. And so we're going to be using a dummy payload. We're going to uh, have a probe part that will still do science experiments. We can still do more gravioli experiments on different biomes perhaps. We'll see. But uh, we're going to have a little probe part that, uh, that has the same mass as this command pod. And we're going to check out whether this whole thing is safe. Now, actually, I might actually have to weigh it down. Um, looking at it, let, let's snap MechJib on here. I should really save this for the next episode, but hey, I'm on a roll here. Um, snapping MechJib on. What you can see is, uh, well, no, it's not that bad. Actually, right now, this is all manageable. Does it have its heat shielding? Yeah, it's got a blade of shielding on it. So all we really need is a decoupler. Uh, what sort of decoupler would work with this? I guess it is a 2 meter one. Okay, and a parachute, obviously. Oh, what just happened? Oh, uh, staging is all wonky. Parachute! Um... Rear shoot, main shoot? I guess that'd be right. I don't like the look of it though. Maybe uh... 
Trogue and main shoot. It's too big. Sort of like these traditional ones though. Yeah, that looks much better, doesn't it? And I'm sure it's still adjusted by real shoots and everything, so... Yeah, that looks a lot better. Hmm, yep. So, uh, if you would like to propose a name for the first man missions, the Mercury-style missions, uh, do leave those those suggestions in the comments below and we're going to have something like this but I'm not going to save this yet because I don't have a name for it. I'll think up a name myself but we're pretty close to what we need right? I mean we definitely have orbital delta V what we uh, need is to get this max thrust weight ratio down so that's the only bit of optimization I need to think about yeah otherwise we've got everything we need Alright, so uh, on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, and a proposed name for the first uh, manned curbled missions in this series, leave those in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.